What's up guys? It's Chris and Aaron from Irene Iron Fitness. And today we are heading over to new friends Mark and Julie from RV Love and we are going to check out their newly remodeled Class A. This RV community truly is small. We ran into Mark and Julie earlier this year in back in April at uh, a Thousand Trails Park in Virginia, Chesapeake Bay. And since then, this is the third time we've ran into them. And we've gotten to know them a lot more. Yeah, so the first time in Virginia, they were doing a little book signing deal at the Thousand Trails there, which we attended and that was fun. Yeah. And then about a month ago, we were in Palm Springs and they had a big premiere it was for the TV show, The RVers, which is on the Discovery Channel. Yeah, and it was like a kickoff. Morton's on the move was there. The getaway couple was there. And a lot of friends here in the Palm Springs area were also here to help support each other and have camaraderie and spend time with each other. And that's what it's all about. My wimpy knock. Hello. Well guys, thanks so much for inviting us over to your coach. It is absolutely beautiful. Well, excited to have you guys over here. It's a big switch from your van. It is, <laughs> it is. So here we are with Julie and Mark Bennett with RV Love. So why don't you tell us about your RV and how you got it and what it was like when you got it and what you've done to it? Sure, yeah. Well, this coach is pretty funny. This is our second coach. We've been on the road for about five and a half years. The first three years we were on the road, we had a 2012 Tiffin gas-powered Class A coach. Mm -hmm. This is actually a 20-year-old coach. This is a 1999 country coach, diesel pusher, and we've done a massive remodel yeah. on this. It's it's uh, It was a big job, but it's we're really, really happy with it. Yeah, it does not look like a typical Class A. We've been in a few different Class A's, but this is the very first one that looks like a home. Nor does it feel 20 years old. No. Well, we've got still quite a few original things in the coach from when we bought it. Uh, it was actually in, in pretty good condition when we bought it. I don't think they used it a whole lot, but you know, it was definitely dated. It had something like 48 mirrors that was in back in the late nineties. And we took 44 of them out without breaking any of them. So we still have four left, but uh, we've got a lot of new touches as well to just uh, really integrate some of the old with the new so it looks a lot more modern and fresh. Well, why don't we start maybe in the kitchen? That's actually one of the things we really liked about this floor plan is this had a massive eight foot wide kitchen, which is really big, even by class A motorhome RV standards. This used to be all the little beveled mirrors behind here. Now it's marble tile. And we've got this. This is a cool little storage solution for people in class B's. They're magnetic glasses that stick up there. But a really big space. We have a convection oven. We have this range top here and tons of storage. And then, of course, behind me here, a full 18 cubic foot residential refrigerator. That yeah. I'm jealous of. <laughs> yeah, we are definitely a little jealous of that. Is that a like a triple burner? Or? Actually, this, even though it's really big, it's just oh. a single, a double burner. And then this cover is nice because it's really heavy grade stainless steel, so I can cut on it. But then if I want to put it away, oh, nice. it just drops. I actually down. really like those big burners because it's actual residential size and you can mm. really put two big skillets on. Right. Without being crammed. Yes, it's nice and nice and big. I didn't like having a th three burner in here either. Yeah. Um, but speaking of this stainless steel thing in prep space, prep space is always a big deal in an RV, but we have additional prep space back here. Let me show you this. We have this custom made piece that slides on here with an cool. extra leg. And so now you have huge prep space. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And it matches your uh, cover on that. Yeah, it all that ties thing. in together. We that's have, beautiful. That's one thing when we did this remodel. We did this whole remodel in less than a month. And we really wanted to have a cohesive theme throughout the whole place. Got a fireplace here. Makes it super homey. Like you said, this that was the 
the upscale luxury apartment is what we were after. Yeah, definitely feels like that. And I love the cabinets. You said these are original cabinetries. These are, well, yes and no. They're original cabinets in that they are the same wood, but they're not how they normally would come. See, when we, when we bought this coat, they were more of this kind of yellowy whitewashed ash. Mm. Um, but then with the raised panel mm -hmm. and but we wanted this much more contemporary look which is actually the inside of the cabinet and to do that we just had to cut out the old hinges so they're exposed hinges but much more modern and then new paint on it really freshened it up yeah the bright white is way better than that dingier cream color yeah and I really like the exposed hinges we also changed all the lighting that was used to be fluorescent lighting through the here and they had little plastic covers that were falling off and we replaced them with LED puck lights and it was a super simple mod. These are just one by eight pieces of wood. Cut them to length, drilled a hole in it, put the puck light in, easy as that. Cool, and nice big sink. Nice big sink and nice big water tanks so you can just run the water yeah. into it. <laughs> just lay on it, <laughs> just let it pour. What are your tank sizes, Mark? Uh, this coach has 100 gallon fresh water and 136 gallons of wastewater capacity combined. Uh, but they are, they're about 75 gallons each. So mm -hmm. we can go weeks on the black tank and, you know, depending on how heavy we use on the gray tank. Yeah. This actually was one of the significant areas of our remodel because when we originally bought this coach, this was a traditional dinette. So it had a booth on this side and another one on this side. But by having that, had a big wooden thing out here that blocked your, your flow of your visual when you walk in and mm. kind of hit that wall right there. And Julie, it's almost always just the two of us. Sometimes we'll have four people over for happy hour or for a meal. And so we didn't need as much seating and we didn't need the extra convertible bed. Yeah. So we turned it into this L-shaped dining. And these are just headboards from Wayfair for the backs. And then we had some custom made covers. And then this whole thing is storage underneath. Nice. And yeah, it this, really opens it up in here. It really opens it up. And then this table also is totally mobile. So if we want to come over to the other area of the house oh. and play games or have drinks around in that area, we could move the table as well. Nice. Very versatile. But the sofa then does a jackknife for sleeping extra guests. It's actually got a really great big storage drawer underneath. So we use this for our, well, we've got a wireless printer in here and all work and stationary related items in here, which is great, keeps it out of the way. But this also uh, comes down to a jackknife sofa. So you could have guests sleep on here, but what we mostly use it for actually is movie night. And we'll just spread this out, get all of the pillows in the RV out and bring a duvet cover and put on a good movie in and just cuddle up. And it's just like having a big day bed. It's really comfy. That's We've actually never had a guest stay overnight. So this is our main workstation that mostly I work from, but we, we kind of share it really. It's whoever's doing the bulk of the video editing usually gets this space because it's a real office chair. This is the office chair Mark had at home in our town home and um, brought it into the RV. So it's super comfortable. I've got dual monitor set up here with the laptop and uh, you know, just edit with like headphones, wireless headphones. And this is just an Ikea desk. So really inexpensive, but really, um, it fits in really well. Yeah. Yeah. No, it works well. And, uh, and we love it. And you've got a great view out there. Well, at the moment, we're looking just at the side of someone's RV. But <laughs> sometimes you get some pretty scenic views outside of that window. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. So in the second office space, Mark, do you want to talk about this? Because this is in your driver's seat area. Mark does all the RV driving. I don't. I in really the cockpit. Drive in the cockpit. Here comes Captain Mark. I spend a lot of time in this seat. They're really comfortable seats, but because I'm driving from this seat, obviously, and then when we're parked, I work from this space a lot too. So in the class eight coach, the steering wheel tilts up and creates almost level. I'm so able to put the laptop up here and then I just have a lap desk with the keyboard and mouse that I am mm -hmm. able to work with that Bluetooth. And so it's a great too, because I, the sun's coming from that way, so we don't want to open the curtains, but I have nice big view out the window when I'm working as well. So that's really pleasant. But when it's time to pack it down, it's super easy because these just fold up. These are just extra cool. extra pieces of the flooring. And then I just drop them in a drawer and they're gone. So smart. Um, nice big open space to be able to, to work from. 
Yeah, you couldn't even tell that that was the driver's seat right there. Right, yeah, and that's what's nice too is because you're using all the space. You know, that's in any type of RV life, especially in van life, but even in class A coach, you want to be able to have multiple purposes for every space to make the most for of sure. it. For sure. So now we're going to go look in the back and check out the bathroom? Yeah, let's check it out. Okay. And this was actually a, another thing that we really looked for when we were checking out coaches, and it's something that you don't see nearly as often in new coaches, is what's called a split bath. And that's a bathroom that uses hallway space to function as the bathroom area. And so this is the vanity area, but we you'll see most of the coaches all in white, but this is a real big pop of color, and it's a big surprise. It's something fun um, when you walk down the hallway because it's very surprising, but it also makes you feel like you're on a vacation. But continuing on with the three piece of the split bath, this is our shower area and initially it had a glass door here with brass accents and now it has a shower curtain but it's a really big spacious shower. And a nice skylight in there. And a nice skylight in there, yes. That really actually, helps open it up. It really does. Oh and this actually goes back inside. So this is a fun feature if you get back from the pool or hot tub and you want to hang up your swimsuits, they can drip into the shower and not into your house. And so this room is just the toilet and then we have a big mural here that's kind of a fun art piece to be able to contemplate, I guess. Yeah, I, lo I love the mural. <laughs> Let's bring you into our bedroom. <laughs> All right. I think how many thousands of people will be in here. But yeah. <laughs> But uh, this is uh, being a single slide motorhome in that slide in the main area. We have no slides in the bedroom, so this is it. This is a full queen size bed. Uh, and this is, yeah, this is such an improvement on what it was when we first bought the motorhome. It actually had nine mirrors when we bought this. We had four mirrors on each of these four cupboards. So four there. This head board area was a full mirror. Two more mirrors here on those little cupboards and two mirrors uh, behind Chris over there and so nine mirrors in the bedroom which was interesting for a little while but then it just got to be a little bit much so <laughs> it's time to get rid of the mirrors. Didn't break one removing uh, seven of the nine mirrors out of the bedroom and it's just a much more calm, uh, you know, just really comfortable and cosy and elegant space. I think it's a bit like a glam hotel. I don't know how many people have uh, chandeliers in there, but we, you might have seen, have two here uh, by the bed. These actually could be wired to have light, uh, but we don't have them wired at the moment. But lots of storage up here behind. We've got a, a closet on each side at the foot of the bed here. And we, we took out the shades and put in seal a uh, wall to ceiling uh, drapes, which is really nice. And Big, big windows, as you can see, which is fantastic if you're boondocking in a really scenic location. You've got fantastic views to wake up to. In the morning, I love it. It is very yeah. subtle, like subtle glamour yeah. with these and like the sequins and the gold and the silver. Yeah. But it's not obnoxious or overwhelming. It really is like serenity spa yeah. sanctuary. It's beautiful in here. And I love the little touches that you can do and put in here because... Uh, like we're not able to put in any sort of knickknacks or anything and it really just helps make it homey. It does, yeah. So pretty. So yeah, so that's it. That's our that's our RV, that's our home on wheels. So I've gotta ask before we sit down and chat more, mm -hmm. what's your favorite memory or favorite touch to the RV that you guys changed? For me it's the bedroom. Is definitely, it? yeah. This is this is definitely where RV love. I mean this yeah. is <laughs> this is the heart of it all. This is this is where we can go to escape from the world. This is where we can just pull the shades and just really recharge and and just really relax and and it's very separate because we work from the RV you know yeah. a lot of our works at the front as well so this is really an area that we it really is a sanctuary that we can escape to that's awesome yeah and we have to ask Mark too yeah well I'm with Julie in that the bedrooms a very special upgrade because it was just total mirrored chaos back there and now it's very relaxing but I also really love our off-grid setup because this is, we did a major upgrade to the electronic system of the coach. Uh, we have solar power on the roof, about a thousand watts, and we also have 600 amp hours of lithium battleborne batteries. Um, and this color control monitor, this actually shows all power that's coming in from shore power or pedestal, shows any power that would be coming in from the sun, shows exactly how much you're using from AC and DC loads. So it's a really good way to be able to keep track of all of your power usage and, and eliminates any battery anxiety or power anxiety. So we can be out boondocking. We can, this coach has big water tanks and big power. So we can be off grid for a couple months at a time. Wow. Um, we can, the water can easily last us two to three weeks and our power 
we've been unplugged from power for a couple months at a time. That's incredible. That's awesome. We still have the battery anxiety, unfortunately. We we did upgrade our batteries to some bigger AGMs, but mm. we have not made the jump to lithium yet. And uh, we do look forward to the day that we, we do that because it, it is living in an RV you don't realize how much power you take up until you are completely off and it, grid. And, right. and it does cause anxiety. It, it does. does. It does cause anxiety. So it's so much more relaxing when you have the power to back it up because we, we can run our coach almost like it is plugged in when we're off boondocking. In fact, this remodel that we did, all the power tools, including table saws, tile saws, and all my power tools, we ran that all off of this motorhome while we were unplugged. Wow. That's yeah. so cool. Well, the inside is absolutely beautiful. Thanks for showing Thank it you. to us. And Mark and Aaron are going to go outside and tinker with some garage stuff. And I think we should stay in here. We've got more important jobs. Yeah. We're going to pour up some wine. Yeah. And that way when Mark and Aaron are back, we can sit down and chit chat. We'll promise more. to save you some. Ma maybe. <laughs> Depends how long they take. Yeah. <laughs> Have fun outside, guys. Well, thanks so much, guys, for showing your rig to us. We really do appreciate it. Yeah, you're and welcome. it is absolutely beautiful. Thank oh, you. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. But we wanted to just quickly mention how we touched base on how small this RV community mm -hmm. is. And just a quick story on how we first heard of you guys. Um, our first full time RVing couple that we met was Denny and Veronica. Oh, the Outlaws. Outlaws. Oh, the I love Outlaws. those guys. Everybody knows the Outlaws. Yes. They're and famous. You guys wrote a book a couple years ago now, right? Oh, it's actually one year ago. One year ago? Yeah. Yep. Oh, it must have just came out then. Yep. Yeah, it had just come out November 20th of 2018. Okay. Mm -hmm. Denny was very proud. So he <laughs> got this book out, and they have an outlaw toy hauler class A, or had one. Yeah. They're now van lifers. Yeah. And he flipped that thing open to his big layout. You can tell it was there. creased open on that page a lot. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. Um, but that's how we first uh, ran across you guys. And why don't you tell us a little bit about why you wrote the book, how you wrote the book, who it's for, and just a little bit about it. Definitely for somebody who's been uh, thinking about the RV life or they've heard about it or maybe they're following some people on social media or something and then just think curious about it mm -hmm. and wondering, is it for me? What do I need to know? What do I need to learn? And that's really who it's for, somebody that that's who it's designed for anyway in the sense of you can go through read the book and determine if it's for you or not and it paints a picture of all the different ways you can RV because obviously how you guys RV in a van is different to how we RV in a class A mm -hmm. and you know some people boondock a lot a lot of people stay in mm -hmm. campgrounds and there's just lots of different ways to RV there's no one size fits all so what kinds of RVs you know where you can camp what you need to know to be able to hit the road and we cover all those. Yeah, it helps people understand the lifestyle. It's not a chronicle of our lifestyle, it's no. about the lifestyle in general. And it's kind of a funny little thing is we've heard from quite a few people who are full-timers for mm -hmm. years on the road and they love the book because they give it to friends and family who think they're crazy <laughs> to help them understand <laughs> what yeah. this lifestyle is about. Yep. Yeah. How have you seen the RV community change over the past six years with mm. it being a movement that's growing it is growing a it is lot. Growing a lot. And, and the people that are doing it is changing a lot too when julie and i first hit the road it was predominantly retired demographic mm -hmm. and that still is a large percentage of it yeah. but there's a larger and larger percentage of people that are younger than us when mm -hmm. we first hit the road we were the young ones right yeah. and now there's so now many you people, guys are the young, <laughs> guys are the young ones and, and so there's more and more people and it's because of the technology and because there's so much more awareness about the lifestyle and the yeah. viability of it. And so you're seeing more and more younger people and more families yeah. coming to do it. So I think the demographic has changed quite a bit. Yeah. yeah. Technology just makes it possible for us once you know. Yeah. And that was our first question before we even started looking at RVs. It's like, well, can we get internet that's strong enough for Mark to be able to do his job from the road? Yeah. And once we had that question answered, yeah. then it was like, oh, we're going for it now. Yep. Yeah. 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 Yeah, now it's a lot easier where if you have a laptop and yep. an internet connection, yep. you can kind of do anything. Absolutely. Yep. So Mark was able to quit his uh, 9 to 5 yep. and mm -hmm. work as a team. You guys run your business, RV Love. You mm -hmm. have the book. What other projects do you work on or yep. do you have in your twinkle in your eye to work on in the future? <laughs> well, actually, when I left my job, my first project, the first thing we did was we built an online school. It's called mm -hmm. RV Success School, and that's what builds... The platform which is actually a lot of what helped make that book become a reality and before people get into the school we've got a ton of free information just yeah. on rvlove.com and that's that's yeah. where we love to be able to send people first is there's so much to be able to share there and so much they can learn yeah, yeah. you guys have been writing on your website for how many years now 
uh, since since we hit the road, basically in the summer of 2014, you know, we, we, we hit the road, we launched rvlove.com, the blog. Um, I've been a writer my whole life, so, you know, mm. I, I do love to write. We both love to write. Um, but then we got into YouTube videos, and you yeah. know, that was an ex- a creative experiment for us <laughs> that kind of took off. But I think what's great about it is it really shows everyone all the different kinds of people at RV and the mm. different ways you can RV, and mm. there's no one way. And that's why, you know, we had a newer RV where we hit the road. Now we've got an older RV. You can remodel, and anyone can afford to RV no matter what your budget because there's always a way yeah. you can make it work for you if you really want to. And how did you guys get into this lifestyle? Well, I mean, for me, I, I think when it really turned the corner was when we met a couple at a restaurant and they were full-time RVers and we started to talk to them and they were loving the lifestyle and we thought, oh, we're going to totally do that someday. And then we went home and and just started to try to make that Sunday a lot sooner. So you guys didn't know them at all? They were just kind of... They were sitting at the next table at a pizza oh, restaurant in Colorado Springs. Were they just like beaming from ear they to were. ear? They were. You know, they were, we were outside on the patio. We had our dog. They were laughing and chatting. We were there. And we're like, well, they're having a good time and enjoying <laughs> life. And we like those kind of people. Mm, and so that's yeah. why we're attracted to you guys. And then we uh, we were just had a really great conversation. Of course, we had all these questions for them. And of course, the first question was, well, how do you get your mail? And which is funny because that's the first question we get. And that ends up being a, a really simple answer mm. to that one is that you know we use a mail service mm. but you know that that just sparked us and they're in their 50s I think mm. it was something like that mm. and we just talked about it all the way home in the car that night and that was uh, I think that was 2011 and it was 2004 so it was a few years later that we hit the road because we, yeah, we went was, back yeah. got back into life and jobs and commutes and and forgot about it you know because that's what happens we think oh I'm totally gonna do that and then yeah. forget and then and then one day we actually remembered it and right and that's how it came we would then started to do our future travel planning and realized that we want to do a lot of travel want to have a lot of experiences not yeah. a lot of things and then we thought okay hey what what about rvs what about we travel with that we could do remember that locally that we met. with yeah. yeah we remember meeting the couple we could travel with our dog we could yep. do all this domestic travel we could yep. still work from it and internet connectivity made it a reality and we hit the road mm, and here we are. haven't looked back so a burning question mm-hmm. could you ever go full-time van life oh that's it that's <laughs> like that's, like not like just a for big a weekend, or a like, little bit <laughs> did you just see the tour Chris? <laughs> yes <laughs> well then we've gotten so. used to a lot more space yeah. i think that we could totally do full-time van life if we weren't working as much if we were just traveling and yeah. having the experiences you know just getting out and doing it so you it. really could live outside of the van so you're living more mm-hmm. out and having we more spent a lot of time inside working it's working inside, and that's why I have a lot of respect for you guys being able to work and have the lifestyle in that same van. But it's it's definitely it's that'd be a it'd be a leap for us. I have a theory. Yeah. I have a theory. It's it's like women in their purses. The bigger the purse you have, the more crap you're going to shove oh, yeah. in yeah. that purse, and so just downsize mm-hmm. your purse. And so we've already downsized from a a townhome. It was kind of really three level townhome, mm-hmm. about eight hundred square feet total to 350 square foot in an RV. Yeah. And so we're already used to living smaller and we know there's a lot of stuff here we could do without. Like it really helps you get clearer. Living in an RV helps you get clearer on what you really need. That's true. And, um, you know, we, we're actually going to be um, heading to Florida soon and we're actually going to be renting a Class B van while we're there. And uh, we're going to give that a try. And uh, But we're, it's only a short trip, so it's very different yeah. to full-timing. It's a great yes. way to dip our toe in and see how it works for us and get a feel for it. And then, you know, we still love this coach. And even if we, we may end up trying to mix up our travel and get some other more flexible and mobile travel options. But we still we're not ready to give up our, our base. CC yeah. motorhome yet. So you might hybrid. We may. Yeah. So how about any advice to new people that are looking into getting into this lifestyle or have any hesitations about some mm. of the thoughts that you had? Mm. Mm. Well, I think just, you know, get as comfortable as you can learning mm-hmm. as much as you can. I mean, there are a lot of great, you know, blogs and YouTube channels out there. Of course, our book is a great place to start to get you familiar with it. But just seeing the different kinds of people that out there doing it and the ways that they're doing it because we all do it differently. And when you find something that feels familiar, that's that's a really great comfort. Mm-hmm. But I think in terms of meeting people and building community, because I think that's a concern for a lot of people, is book yourself into an RV rally or event. Mm-hmm. Because we didn't mm-hmm. do that for a long time. And I think the sooner you book yourself into an RV rally or event, you're going to meet a lot of these people a lot sooner and form mm-hmm. friendships very quickly. And I think that's a really great way, even before you hit the road. Book that RV rally, book yep. that event, and show up to a whole crowd. You know, it could be a hundred, two hundred, three hundred. It could be a thousand people at one of the big ones. Yeah. And uh, there's no shortage of people there to meet, learn from, and they'll they'll make you feel welcome. You'll learn a lot. 
Yeah, and make some connections to just stay in touch with as you cross yeah. certain regions throughout yeah. the seasons. It is by yeah. region, by season, as we do it totally. in the RV. Well, and that's what's funny is because the seasons drive people north in the summer and then south in the winter, you end up going a lot of similar paths. And if you mm -hmm. stay in a campground membership program like we do, you end up in similar parks. So you start mm -hmm. seeing a lot of the same faces. Country too. gets smaller quickly. Gets smaller and smaller. And you see some of the same places and same faces. We've actually met certain couples at five different states across the country. And and Danny and Veronica of the yeah. Alvey Outlaws being two of them. We see those guys all around the country. <laughs> yeah. I think they're in Mexico now. They, they are. are. Cheers, guys. If we were having Cheers, Baja. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you guys so much for hanging out with us this afternoon and coming and doing a tour. And Absolutely. It was, a, it was a blast. Thank you so much for inviting us into your home and uh, showing us around. Yeah. It's amazing. And it's uh, maybe we can you can return the favor and we'll come and do a tour of your van. That's I think our audience like would love to see <laughs> your van. We would love to see your van. That and maybe like we can think about whether or not we could downsize that much. Yeah, that'll make yeah. it easier to have <laughs> that thought. It'll be interesting. Yeah. Come, come snoop through our cupboards. <laughs> it's a little bit shorter of a tour, but it's all it's good. good. And also, now that we're finally done getting the good tour and we've had some time to catch up on stuff, we're going to hit the kitchen. Julie yep. and I are going to put some apps in the oven. Yeah. And we're going to do a healthy twist on apps in your house, which if you're interested in watching that, you can catch on my Wednesday video that we put out with healthy recipes and this Wednesday it's going to feature Julie's Kitchen and Mark's Kitchen. I'll be happy hour. Yes. <laughs> Everybody wants that. Yes. <laughs> I want to watch that. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you guys so much for watching. We hope you guys enjoyed that episode. If you did, don't forget to give it a, a like and a thumbs up and don't forget to check out Mark and Julie at RV Love and we'll catch you next time. Bye. See ya.